This is video 2.2, Online Learning Types of Delivery, for ADT2160, the course on online learning theories and models. This little clip is going to talk in a very broad sense about the types of delivery of online learning. And so what I'd like you to think about going into the content in this clip are what are the various ways that online learning can be delivered, and how does the way in which it's delivered impact on the learning that can occur? The follow-on from that is, what does this mean for the design of online learning? So keep those in the back of your head as uh, we're going into this little clip. And this clip is based on the readings, uh, some of the materials in the readings for this week, including the article around synchronous and asynchronous e-learning. Um, as well as the article around blended learning. So I would encourage you to take a look at those as well because there's much more detail in those articles. So broad brush strokes here. There are generally considered three different types of delivery. And I've put some definitions up here. Asynchronous, where you're supporting um, at people being online and connected and being able to contribute, but they have a different time, a different place, a different space. They don't have to be together all at the same time. Um, and then synchronous, of course, is the opposite of that, where it's supporting learners in real time. And there are different examples of each of those. And then a blend of, of type of delivery is where at least in part some of the content is delivered online but the key part of this definition up here, Staker and Horn's definition from the Inosite report, is that the student has some control over the time, the place, the path, and or the pace of the learning. So three broad, again, broad brush strokes of the different types of delivery. And now let's just take a quick look at some of these. Um, again, in the article, asynchronous and synchronous e-learning that get into, gets into much more detail around benefits, challenges. Uh, but just to quickly highlight, some of the key benefits for asynchronous, it's anytime, anywhere. As many of you have found out with Blackboard, you can post a discussion, a question, a response um, anytime, and someone will respond. They may not respond instantly, but it will come. Um, and there's time for considered responses. So often this is called think time. So the idea that you can read what people have posted in the discussion um, and then you can reflect on that, consult some literature, uh, write up your response, edit your response, post your response, think about others' responses to your response, that sort of thing. One of the challenges with purely asynchronous learning is fostering student engagement which includes developing that sense of community. Um, so following on from that is many uh, early days, asynchronous, and even now, um, when it's purely just asynchronous learning, there is uh, reportedly a sense of isolation from learners. So some examples of asynchronous learning, uh, when people have a learning management system course, like we have our Blackboard, and they're using discussion groups and they're just using discussion groups, they're not doing a real-time chat, they're not videoing in, they're not using any of the synchronous tools. Um, another example, and this is sort of early days, but it still does happen, is when it's a website, text-based, and then there might be audio or video files. Again, the content is being delivered, um, and they, learners can get in at any time, anywhere to review it. They can consider it. Uh, they can post a response on the website or not. Um, but there's no synchronous interaction there. Synchronous learning, on the other hand, uh, some of the benefits, of course, the offset, is that it addresses some of the isolation issues that many learners feel in just purely asynchronous. And it supports other types of communication uh, styles. So you're not just communicating through written text, uh, you're communicating verbally. And if there is web presence as well, you can also see the person. So if it's just verbal, you're able to hear the change in tone and inflection in a voice, which has quite a bit of weight in terms of understanding the message. And if there's a web camera or a video feed, then you're also able to see the person as they're speaking. So you've got the body language component of that as well, which we all know aids in our understanding of what's being communicated. Some of the challenges of synchronous, purely synchronous, 
are scheduled time. So there is a fixed time when everyone has to be online. They can be anywhere in the world, um, but they do need to be on at a fixed time to participate synchronously. So sometimes, of course, that means waking up at 2 in the morning um, or other uh, things like that. It does also tend to put a pressure on the immediate response. So just as when in asynchronous you have time to reflect, one of the perceived, one of the noted challenges in synchronous is that unless there is wait time given, uh, which we've talked about in our tutorials, uh, there's a tendency to want to jump on and get the response out there right away. Uh, and if there is no response, it's difficult sometimes for the facilitator to allow that wait time. And so they tend to move on quite quickly uh, so possible things are missed or there's misunderstandings that are created because of that. Some examples of synchronous include what you're familiar with, Adobe Connect, um, Collaborate is another tool, Skype is another tool, any kind of real-time chat, that sort of thing. Moving into blended learning, um, so this is what many have phrased as the best of both worlds. Uh, it works to address the isolation issue that many learners feel, um, and yet it still provides them a bulk of content that they can access asynchronously. It's flexible. Um, and multimodal, so not only are you text-based, written, but you're also auditory um, learning, you're being able to use the body language and communicate in a different way. So some of the challenges of blended learning, uh, scheduling, and support. Um, so there, there are some learners who prefer to learn purely asynchronously and they are not interested in building that learning community or fostering a learning community. However, the research has shown time and time again that student engagement, student motivation, learning um, is all facilitated when there is a sense of community, a sense of support, a sense of being um, connected and in this together. Some examples of blended learning, uh, when you have your face-to-face -face learning in a classroom and then you have some of your content online in a learning management system like a Blackboard. Um, another example of a blend is synchronous and asynchronous like we are doing in this program. There are lots of different ways you can cut and slice the blends and in the next little video we'll get into that in much more detail. Um, in the InoSight report they go on in, in much more detail about blended learning and we're going to touch on that. So just some things to, uh, to ponder now that we're at the end of the 30,000 foot view of the delivery methods. Uh, how does the way in which online learning deliver influence the learning? And what does this mean when you're designing the learning? And then the last one is what comes first, the chicken, the delivery method, or the egg, the technology? So I'm looking forward to discussing to these questions in our tutorial and getting your thoughts on some of this. Um, encourage you to read in more detail. You might want to look back at the EDUCAUSE article on synchronous and asynchronous learning and certainly going into the next clip where we talk about blended learning. It's grounded in that article from the Inosite report. So thank you and I will see you in our tutorial.